if you have a decent memory, you probably remember you're supposed to turn off your phone, stay seated during the contest, only leave during the one minute break between speakers, and not use flash photography while the speakers are talking. So I won't mention it. <laughs> and here are the contestants in the order that they are speaking. Contestant number one, Amy Sagan. Contestant number two, Oscar Langford Jr. Oscar Langford Jr. Contestant number three, Mary Kim. Mary Kim. Contestant number four, Prez the Ceiling. And here are the contestants in the order they are not speaking. Contestant number four, <laughs> Prez the Ceiling. Contestant number three, Mary Kim. Contestant number two, Oscar Langford Jr. That's from one, Amy Sagami. We'll now begin the international speech contest. Our first contestant, Amy Sagami, ABC, ABC, Amy Sagami. My grandmother was ahead of her time. When most of the Chinese women her age wearing their strict long hair or tied it back into a bun, she was liberated. She had short, short hair. Stood only four foot two. She was known as the CEO, Chinese Executive Old Lady. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests. As I was growing up, my grandma would remind me, Amy, learn your ABCs. It's not just the first three letters of the English language. It actually stands for an ABC principle that could last your lifetime. It's simple, it's essential, and it's easy to remember. You can apply it anywhere, anytime, in any situation. Grandma was right. When my high school teacher said, in America, girls can go to college, get an education, and become independent. I went to my parents. Mom, Dad, please, can I go to America, please? Amy, we are political refugees. We have no money. Thank goodness, Grandma had a different answer. She said, Amy, learn your ABC. The first thing is A, to ask. Ask to learn, and you learn to ask. By asking, I find out there were ways to make money. I was a factory worker, office janitor, and a waitress. By asking, I find out that I was eligible for scholarship. By asking, I was able to reach for my American dream. What is your dream? Go ahead and ask. Ask who, what, how, when, why. Why not? You should have seen me the day I left home. Sitting on the plane, stuck in the middle seat, I was asking my fellow passengers, do you know where I'm going? America. <laughs> do you know what I'm going to do? Study and eat hamburgers. <laughs> Many hamburgers later, I graduated from college and became a mechanical engineer for a Fortune 100 company. Then I asked, is this all there is? When I figured out, I told my friends, my next career move. Oh, you should have seen this surprised look on their faces, especially my college roommate, Susan. Stood six foot tall, she's all business. Amy, you are an engineer. How could you become an artist? 
This thing of painting on water, never heard of it. That sounds impossible. <coughs> Susan, my grandma taught me ABC. B is to believe. Believe is the fountain of possibilities. I believe I can combine my science education with my passion for art. I believe there's a way to use the water as a canvas. Eventually, I became a professional artist, and I launched my website, paintingonwater.com. When word got out, I was invited to speak about this unique, innovative technique. This time, Susan really took pity on me. You are not a native English speaker. Come on, Amy. It's too stressful for you to do public speaking. <laughs> oh, I know. You can paint on water, but do you think you can really walk on water? <laughs> do you have a Susan in your life? <laughs> Actually, what really bothered me was my childhood memory way back. When I grew up in China, I had this older cousin, Big L. He used to bully me. A girl is not worth the price of rice. <laughs> Nobody would care about what a girl had to say. Shut up. <laughs> now you know why I left. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't date any Chinese man. <laughs> now remember, Grandma said, see is to change. Change your perspective, and you can change your destiny. I changed what Susan and Neville have to say. That's just their opinion. They don't represent the rest of the world, and certainly they couldn't predict my future. When I changed that perspective, I gained my confidence, and I'm able to speak up, even with an accent. In conclusion, I have been practicing ABC principle for a number of years. What's the A stands for? Yes. What's the B? Believe. And what's the C? Change. Oh, you are fabulous. My grandma would have been so pleased. She's the reason how I can stand here tonight. I so wish you could be here. I really miss her a lot. Thank you, Grandma, for the gift I can use for my whole life. I just need more time. <coughs> Test of number two. Oscar Langford Jr. Oscar Langford Jr. What's in it for me? Toastmasters, distinguished guests, judges, visitors. Last fall, my manager gave me an excellent suggestion. 
and like a lot of his excellent suggestions, I said no. <laughs> what was his excellent suggestion, you might be asking yourself? It was to get involved with the high school mentoring program that my company was sponsoring. Well, let me tell you why I said no. First of all, I'm busy. I'm <laughs> busy, right? Second reason, I'm in Toastmasters. In fact, I'm an officer in Toastmasters, like a lot of people in this room today. And fourth, I didn't have a high school mentor when I was going to school. <laughs> and the bottom line is, what's in it for me? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about two points today. The benefits that I receive from mentoring and how you can get involved with mentoring. And if you're already involved in mentoring, how you can stay engaged. But back to, well, let me ask you this. Is there anyone currently involved in mentoring right now? Well, hopefully you've received some of the, the benefits I'm going to talk about. And uh, but let me go back to that, that conversation with my manager. I consider that to be a real moment of truth because what he told me is that sometimes everything is not always about you. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to swallow, actually. Because <laughs> I'm an only child. And, but he actually even challenged me. He said, if you don't want to do it, get out of it. But I told him that, well, you know, I committed to your commitment. Once I commit to something, I'm in it. I'm not going to get out of it. Well, anyway, I had no idea that I would have actually enjoying this thing and getting some benefits out of it. The three main benefits that I see with mentoring, for me personally, have been I've increased my skills. I'm mentoring a student who goes to Chicago Technical Academy, and it's a real technically focused curriculum they're on. And I don't want this kid pushing me around technically. <laughs> so I went and learned some new skills on web design, HTML, hypertext markup language, and um, what's another skill we picked up? Cascading uh, style sheets and just all kind of uh, Android programming. And at least this way I could meet my student where she was. And I actually have to admit that I've actually learned some things. The other thing that's been great about it is me meeting other mentors, other professionals like myself who were working with the other students. And these people work at companies like Microsoft, Cisco, DeVry University, and the city of Chicago, just to name a few. Another benefit I've gotten from this program is actually the sense of giving back, giving back to the community, touching someone else's life. And I guess the, the, the main benefit I've gotten out of it is really when she actually came to Blue Cross, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But I guess everyone is probably thinking right now, well, that's good for you, but what's in it for me? <laughs> well, I think it, it can be a lot in it for you, to be honest with you. One way we can get more involved in mentoring is actually right here in Toastmasters. If you are an experienced leader or speaker, consider mentoring to a, a, newer, a new member. And if you're actually new in a Toastmasters, this room is full of mentors. You might just want to reach out to one. As a matter of fact, my area governor, Moni, actually told me she was my mentor, so I guess I must have really needed one. <laughs> because she, I didn't even ask for her, and she just told me. I don't know if I want to tell you, sometimes it's not about being a mentor, it's actually getting mentored. You know, where if you, you know, you, you reach a certain point in your life or career, you might want to look at someone who's a, a level above you. Our president might go to Taro's coming to town uh, next month, so uh, maybe we, that might be a good person who might want to mentor somebody. The, um, but back to what I was saying about when she came to Blue Cross, it was really great because one of the reasons why I wanted her to come to Blue Cross was to shadow me on my job. It was great. She got a chance to meet other people, my man management, my teammates. It really lifted the morale of our whole group. I, I got other people involved with the process. She enjoyed it. She really liked it. I showed her all around. As a matter of fact, I even brought her to a Toastmasters meeting to see how our club worked because I'm trying to start a youth leadership program at their high school. And I wanted her to see me actually give a speech so that she would know. And I told her, hey, you're going to run for an officer position in, in this youth leadership program. You have no options. you got to do it. What I find with these children is that you can't give them a lot of options because they, they'll just you know, drift away. So I've gotten her involved with working with me and it's really been great. I did want to talk about one, one, one last thing and that's the email she sent after her visit to my job and I think you'll find it very interesting. It says, hey Oscar, how's everything going? Still busy, I bet. See, she knows I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> but I really enjoy visiting your job, meeting a lot of nice people. 
I really like how everyone gets along there. These kids are sometimes kind of naive. <laughs> it's a real peaceful place to be. I see why you like your job. I think Melissa and your boss and Maurice, these are people who she met, and everyone is really cool. I hope to come again. Thanks for inviting me. I enjoy myself and tell everyone I said hello. By the way, what are we going to do about this Toastmasters thing at my school? <laughs> you know, I'm going to wrap it up by saying this. In our February Toastmaster International magazine, our president, Mr. Michael Notaro, in the viewpoint section of the magazine, talked about hitting the Toastmaster sweet spot. And I can relate to that because I play a lot of tennis, and when you hit that ball perfect in that sweet spot, it just bounces right off the racket. And he mentioned that. The sweet spot is when actually when communication and leadership come together almost effortlessly. And I have to admit, when I had that student in that Toastmasters meeting, and she was sitting next to my boss's boss, and I was looking at her, it doesn't get any better than that. So I would encourage each and every one of you today to consider joining a mentoring program. I think it works best when you're actually getting mentored and doing mentoring. Mr. Toastmaster. The judges need more time. Next contestant is Mary Kim. with a crew of 27 men and a wooden sailing ship called the Endurance to explore the South Pole and to walk across the entire continent of Antarctica. What a goal. Unfortunately, they never set foot on land. About 100 miles offshore, their ship became locked in the ice and they couldn't move for months. They were stuck like an almond in a chocolate bar. <laughs> Eventually, they were forced to abandon ship and watched in horror from the ice as their ship cracked, crumbled, and sank. They were in dire circumstances. Think about it. Stranded on the ice off the coast of Antarctica, thousands of miles from civilization, and nobody knew they were there. But Shackleton did not despair. He was an optimist. He always encouraged his men. He kept them active. He led them to an island where there was some food, some food stored away. And eventually, Shackleton sailed 800 miles over open ocean in a tiny lifeboat to get rescue for his men. And not a single man was lost. Many people then and now believe that Shackleton's positive attitude was the reason his men were saved. 
Well, how about you? Do you think Shackleton's attitude made a difference? And what kind of leader would you like to follow? Someone who's positive, optimistic, who encourages you when the going gets rough, or someone who doesn't? I believe having a positive attitude makes all the difference. Having a positive attitude is everything. We've seen what a difference it makes in leadership, with Shackleton's example. It motivates us personally. It gives us energy. It helps us meet our goals. And having a positive attitude affects our physical health and well-being. More and more research is showing that a positive attitude and how we think and what we think affects our brain chemistry. Think about that. How we think and what we think affects our brain chemistry. The authors of a book called Living to 100 have done research and report that people with a positive attitude tend to live longer and have a better quality of life. Wouldn't you like that? <laughs> we all would. I learned firsthand how important it is to have a positive attitude many years ago on my first job. And I worked at a university, and my coworker who sat next to me was a middle-aged woman named Ruth. Well, I now call her Toxic Ruth, and you'll soon find out why. <laughs> Ruth was a chain smoker and a chain scowler. She wore a perpetual frown. She complained, and she was negative, and nothing was right. She worked with university students, and you know the problem was, she hated young people. <laughs> but she also hated old people. <laughs> she hated everyone in between. And I sat next to her every day, and I found that I was being drawn in and dragged down by her complaining and her negativity. In fact, her negative attitude was as toxic or more so than the tobacco smoke swirling around. <laughs> and at that time, I decided that I did not want to be like Toxic Group, that I wanted to be different. And I realized that we cannot always control our circumstances, but we can control how we respond to those circumstances. We can control our attitude. And so I made a decision to have a positive attitude. That's easier said than done. <laughs> Not all of us are born with a sunny disposition. <laughs> and circumstances get in the way, and so do feelings and emotions. But I have learned that there are ways that we can develop and maintain a positive attitude. And I want to share a few of those, and then tell you what I have discovered to be the key. Think about it. What we read affects us. What we watch affects us. What we think and how we speak affects our attitude. Toastmasters gives us a positive attitude. Our posture makes a difference. If someone told you to act like you're depressed, you might sink your head, you might slouch your shoulders, and kind of walk slowly and shuffle. But now if someone said, Act like you won the lottery, yippee! <laughs> or act like you won the Mega Millions, yippee, yippee! <laughs> I feel so much more positive. <laughs> Having a positive attitude, giving thanks, is the key that I want to share with you. Being thankful in all circumstances really contributes to a positive attitude. And I learned that recently from personal experience. We had to do some repairs around the house this winter. And so I am now very, very thankful that we have a new roof over the head. And we have a new furnace in the basement, and a new storm door on the front, and a new stove in the kitchen, all within the space of two months. I am thankful. Our bank account is not quite zero. <laughs> Close, but not quite. I really recommend that you cultivate an attitude of gratitude. It helps maintain a positive attitude. Abraham Lincoln once said, people are about as happy as they make up their minds to be. So I ask you, how happy 
will you make up your mind to be? Will having a positive attitude make a difference to you? It made a difference to Ernest Shackleton and his men. I'm absolutely positive it's going to make a difference to you too. Mr. Toastmaster. Judges need more time. Yeah. Contestant number four, prize Vasilev. When things go downhill, when things go downhill, prize Vasilev. The steering wheel jerked. I struggled to keep the car in control. That night, a flat tire changed my perception of gravity. <laughs> <laughs> if you were in the car, you would have felt the jerkiest few blocks to the nearest gas station. Under bright lights, I parked on a slight downhill, leading to a steeper slope towards busy Belmont Avenue. Mr. Chairman, Toastmasters and guests, have you ever done something stupid? <laughs> <laughs> I broke the first rule of flat tire changes. Choose a level spot. <laughs> Friends, there aren't that many slopes in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> but that night, oh yeah, I found one. <laughs> By the way, got out, opened the trunk, excavated the jack. <laughs> Unused for centuries. <laughs> Rusty piece of metal. <laughs> But didn't Teddy Roosevelt say, do what you can <laughs> with what you have, <laughs> where you are? <laughs> Not a big deal. I can handle. Loosen the lug nuts, place the antique. <laughs> 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 Remove the flat tire. The only support in the front, the rusty jack. Back at the trunk, I started pulling out the spare tire, shaking the entire car. I felt the car going downhill. Bam! The jack collapsed. The car collapsed. My lungs collapsed. <laughs> Not a big deal. I can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> Lifted the car just enough. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, <laughs> <laughs> just enough. <laughs> the car had moved 
to the steeper slope. I grasped the gravity of the situation. <laughs> Have you heard the myth of Sisyphus? Punished in hell, he rose a giant stone to the top of a hill. The stone always escapes him near the top, rolling down. I designed one hell of a punishment. <laughs> How do you handle that? That's a big deal. <laughs> That's when I heard that voice with you. You are an idiot. <laughs> and then I saw that people across the street were looking at me. An audience. I was giving a presentation. <laughs> the jack breaker. They were learning <laughs> how not to change a flat. <laughs> but then I heard another voice. Reach out. I often hear voices. <laughs> Reach out. Should I involve the audience? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> That's not my car. <laughs> Went to the gas station store. Behind the counter was Jesse, a middle-aged Indian. <laughs> Reached out to him. I did something stupid. <laughs> I can't handle it on my own. <laughs> Don't beat yourself up. My shift ends soon. I'll help you. A man walked in. Jesse put on his jacket. Let's go. Ten years ago, when I came from Bulgaria, Jesse came from southern India. He looked at the car. I looked at the audience. It's his car. <laughs> Press. You were right. That's stupid. <laughs> but don't worry. I'll jack up the car a bit. You push the flat tire underneath. We'll reposition the jack. Jesse jumped on the jack. <laughs> you never know who you're going to find <laughs> when you reach out. I found a DJM, distinguished jack master. <laughs> Jesse's little act of kindness gave me the little extra high <laughs> to put on the spare tire. Rusty, Eastern European hand, shook rusty, Southern Indian hand. <laughs> a friend in need was a friend Indian. <laughs> but Jesse did more than change my life. He changed my perception of gravity. <laughs> I felt a special pull. Not the pull of gravity pulling you down, but another pull of gravity lifting you up. And that gravity can only be activated when you reach out. When you reach out, you attract solutions, lessons, friendships. Is there something collapsed in your life? Something you try to lift up on your own, yet things kept going downhill. Your awareness, maybe, limit. Your skills, maybe, <laughs> rusty. <laughs> You always have the choice when things go down. <laughs> Reach out. Reach.
that's why I don't change that. collected. Now, because the table topics, people have not done enough impromptu speeches, we now have an interview of those contestants who are only in one contest, which means maybe the press, you may have been seated. So, will Wally Blanchard, Stephen Froome, Michael Beckett, come up to the front in the order that you were speaking, please. Thank you. First, Wiley, what is your club number? <laughs> Zero one five four and a few extra digits. All right. <laughs> Blue Shield, one. <laughs> I'm not a big believer in these speech file things, so here's what I'm going to do. Maybe you feel the same sort of way. You don't know what to put down, what to leave out. Who really cares anyway? So, ask me one question. What do you want to be known for in your life? Talk until you see the red flag wave around, and then if you don't, I'm going to have to push you off stage. <laughs> I want to be known for helping people realize that they can do things that they thought they couldn't do. Uh, I say that because I, I personally you know, want to challenge myself to try new things, and I, I'm a firm believer in jacking everything up. You know, and, and I say that because, um, and my girlfriend, she, she can testify to that. Um, if I can do it myself, I'm a do-it-yourselfer guy. Um, I will break anything just so I can try to fix it. 95% of the time, I probably won't be able to fix it. But 5%, if I can fix it, I'm an expert. So I, I really want to believe in, I really want people to try to do things they don't think they can do. Um, I, I believe that you eventually grow from that and realize you're a lot more powerful than, you, than your uh, insecurities let you think. Here's a piece of paper.
Darren LaCroix says, stage time, stage time, stage time. I respect yeah. that. I respect that. <laughs> All right, Stephen, what is your club number? I was afraid you were going to ask me that after you asked why I was. Yeah, <laughs> I I was no, no. Your club doesn't have a name. Loop Trustmasters. Loop hey. Trustmasters. Hey. Assuming you don't have any uh, memory impairments, you probably remember what I just asked Wiley, so I'm just asking the same question. <laughs> well, I was actually afraid of that too. <laughs> <laughs> this is the place to get over those fears. <laughs> That's the reason I joined here, actually. I am a lawyer. And in my business, people fight and scheme and backstab to get their name in the law firm's name. And 10 years later, their name's out of the name and they're forgotten completely. <laughs> we work hard, we build long hours, we do everything we can to win cases, and 10 years later, the cases are forgotten completely. <laughs> <laughs> what I remember about other people in my life is what I'd like to be remembered for. I remember the people who helped me and taught me things and taught me to have integrity in a difficult business, and to do the right thing and to pass that on to other people. And I'd like to think that I did my best to do that uh, throughout my career and for as many years, God willing, as I have left to do this uh, for a living. Uh, and I'd like to have the people that I helped some decades or years down the road remember me. something in their lifetime than I've done my job. So I guess out of, as all, when all is said and done, if those two little kids back there who have been very quiet for me all night, yeah. So, yeah. anything from this experience, <laughs> what I expect them to do when they leave the house, and you will leave the house <laughs> one day, <laughs> uh, I hope I will have done my job and you will become excellent citizens yourself and future parents and leaders and all that. Yada, yada. Yada, yada. That's pretty much it. Anybody <laughs> else who was in the contest, please come to the stage. Amy Prez. First, Oscar and Mary, I want to thank you for the excitement because I wasn't quite certain you were here, and so I just had to kind of call your name and wait for something to happen. It was sort of like, uh, like waiting for a miracle to happen. You just kind of okay, please let them be here. Called the name, and you did appear, so that that was very good. Thank you. <laughs> Little things that I live for, and that was definitely a, a great thing. Same question, everybody. Does anybody need to repeat what I've said? Club number. Club number 595201. Okay. <laughs> Extreme Toastmaster. Oh, my God. <laughs> One year and 84 days. <laughs> And I would love to be remembered as the bridge across the East and West, art and science, between the speaker and the audience. Because I think it's that through that kind of connection that this whole world would be a better world. 
We can all be connected one way or the other, no matter how extreme it can be. This moment I'm speaking here, next moment I'll be the audience listening to the rest. And it would be the same for every one of us too. There are days that I'm a visitor traveling to different places, and there are days that I'm a host at my home country, hometown. This is my home country, by the way. <laughs> and Chicago is my hometown. And then I will play tour guide to my friends who are visiting. So that's what I would like to remember as, to play both sides of the coin, so to speak. And it's very much the yin and the yang, the balancing of it. And I would like that um, you take that thought with you. Sometimes you're on this side, sometimes you could be on the other side. And it's by switching position that you get a different perspective that my grandmother was talking about. <laughs> That's a long minute. Yes. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> some others through example to do the same. Step out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Now we don't have time for all the club numbers that you could recite. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. Oh, I can't. Come in. Okay. Pick okay. Okay. any club name. I represent <coughs> Toastmasters of Lincoln Park today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the extreme Toastmasters. That's true, that's true. Divided, <laughs> divided loyalties. I, I feel for you. I feel for you. <laughs> and the same question here. But Tim, I just want to be remembered this Toastmaster. <laughs> <laughs> because, because, think about it. Sometimes life takes you away from the organization. I wish I got involved much earlier, and I hope I can stay for the long run. Because there's so much to learn and gain, and it's all from that organization. So Toastmaster, I believe, is a very good editor for 
my grave. <laughs> I recently heard about a lady who was planning to start an industry. This is great, great industry to be postmasters in the ladies. <laughs> where you are in the... Because this is an organization that truly, truly inspires. And the longer you stay in it, the more you benefit and the more you have the chance to give back to others. really don't want those pieces of paper, but you got to give it to them or I can get out of here. All right, this time I'd like to call our division governor the lectern, so I'm going to do that. Well, division governor, so if you like it, please. <laughs> about leadership is you learn to take risk. So when I asked Tim to be the Toastmaster, <laughs> so well, you know, I kind of know Tim. And I know he may be a little different. <laughs>
get you a hug from me. <laughs> that then triggers my mind to hand you the certificate. <laughs> <laughs> and then you will get you a award. Contestants, <laughs> any questions on that? Very good. <laughs> Table topics first. Remember, hug, give you a certificate. <laughs> Third place.